was I there that yesterday morning? Because I can come into the situation and say she's right. Amen. Everything in the Word of God is not a carrot on the end of a stick. You understand that? The promises of God are not for when you're dead. The scripture tells us this. All the promises of God are yes and amen to those that believe. And I think a lot of times we think we'll just keep trudging on and maybe, you know, these, something will be true in the scripture. No, it's all true. And all, all the promises of God are yes and amen to those that I'm 60! But I'm so happy to be able to go to young women like Jesse and Amber and Jenna. You're still young. You're still in there. You know, and, and to be able to go before them and say, no, the promises of God are yes and amen and they're real. Yeah. And you live, you can have them now in the land of the living. That's amen? Right. That's our yeah. job. So get busy. Yeah. Tom, honey, they're warmed up. They look friendly. They'll be fine. Oh, you got the girl. Morning. Yes. All right. Let, let me say this. We always spoke that scripture, you know, uh, whereby the, the amen is spoken by us. Where it says all the promises of God are yes and amen. A lot of times we think, well, what's, what the heck is amen? I mean, I don't, for years I thought amen meant let's eat. Because, you know, <laughs> isn't that it? And you know, amen. You know, that's kind of that. But amen is more than just a trivial thing that we just kind of say in passing. But it actually says this, what you have said, I am in agreement with. What you are saying, I want my life to be conformed to. Thereby, all the promises of God that he's speaking about healing and deliverance and freedom. I say, I am in agreement with what you have said. And let it be done to me as you have spoken. Amen. Amen. And that's what that, that, that point of establishment that gives us that platform to be able to move forward. And in that, you know, I think that a lot of times, like Susie said, it's the, we, we look at the promises like that carrot. Keep running, you know, someday, maybe, could be, you'll get something. The Lord's not that way. His hand is exposed and disposed to those whose heart is turned him. As we seek him in that way, he will come and bring life, life ritual and satisfying. And I think for most of us, we find ourselves <clears throat> looking for that satisfaction in life. We're looking for that place of fulfillment. Because it's always tomorrow that God's going to do something, right? And Or have you ever noticed that God's moving where you're not? You know, it's like, there's revival in China. There's revival in Brazil. There's re and you go there, and you know, it, it just left. You should have been there yesterday. <laughs> and sure, I think, God doesn't like me, you know, because everywhere I go, he's just been there. And, and, and that's that. But I, I believe there's a word of the Lord for you guys this morning. Um, not just for Coastal. I think the Lord was saying, as I was praying this morning, that there was a, for everyone to attend. So if you're here by mistake, you thought you're going to a different church. But, uh, you know, even if you came here by mistake, I, I believe the Lord has a specific prophetic statement for you this morning. I need to ponder and hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Because he wants to bring a point of release, a point of freedom. That we are, you know, I don't know you, but for me, you know, sick and tired of being sick and tired. You know, and the Lord wants to draw a line of demarcation. He wants to draw a line in the sand. And, it, and basically the word of today is along this line. Is that this enemy you see today, you'll see no longer. Amen. That I would, he would draw this line and he put an end, he put a death to the oppression that's coming to your life. To the fear that's coming to your life. Amen. To the poverty that's coming to your life. To the sickness that's coming to your life. The oppression that's coming to your life. Amen. Those are the things that the Lord just said. That he, he would show it. That he would break this stronghold. He'd break a heavy yoke. And he'd bring this place of liberty. That we can wake up tomorrow morning. And instead of saying, good God, it's morning. We can say, good God, good morning, God. You know, and, and that would be a better change for each and every one of us. And his heart is turned towards you. He just wants to change our perspective just a little bit to understand that his hand is disposed to us and he wants to bring about that freedom. In, um, in John chapter 5, you, you know the story there, um, starting with verse 3, I'm going to read it to you. Crowds of sick people, blind and lame, paralyzed, laid on the porches. One of the men lying had been sick for 38 years. 
When Jesus saw him, he knew that he'd been ill for a long time. And he asked him, um, would you like to get well? I can't, sir, the sick man said. For I have no one to put me into the pool when the water bubbles, uh, bubbles up. Someone else always gets there before me. Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk. Instantly, the man was healed. He rolled up his sleeping mat and began walking. But the miracle happened on the Sabbath. So the Jewish leaders objected and said to the man, Who cured you? You can't work on the Sabbath. The law doesn't allow it for you to carry your sleeping mat. But he replied, The man who healed me told me to pick up your mat and walk. Who said such a thing? They demanded that I don't know. He disappeared from the crowd. You know, guys, a lot of times when we come to church, we're just like those guys. You guys know the story. You know, the, there's the pool there. And uh, actually, when I, sh I shared this one time, and somebody called me and said, he had just been to Israel and been to the pool of Bethesda. And he said, it's still there. It's not in a way, but it's there. And uh, he said that, you know, what happens is this. People would come, and this strange thing would take place. And who knows why it would do. You know, it, but the pool would be stirred from what the scripture said by an angel. It would stir it. And it first went in and got healed. Now look, after 38 years, if I was laying by that pool, I would have devised a plan. You know, I would have been right up on the edge, you know, like this, and hanging on to something, you know, the filter, you know, whatever, so that when it bubbled, I'd just roll in. But after 38 years, this guy had not pulled that off. And so he'd been laying there in his ailment, right? And so here's the situation. He was looking at the status quo for his healing. He was looking for what we knew, you know, and I'm going to call that church. He was looking for that system to bring about the healing, and this is what was offered. But unfortunately, at that time, it was eeny, meeny, miny, mo, let the rest go. You know, it, it was really a rough time. But in that, God has changed the game plan. So in this, is this, this is what we do. We come into the situation. We come to church hoping and wishing you know, three coins in the fountain, click our heels together, no place like home, whatever it may be. We're looking for that resolve that will bring about the miraculous power within our lives. And most of the time, we all go home saying, oh well, another year passes and I'm not getting the healing that I'm needing. We come and we were just waiting for that thing. But if something happened, the bubbling was a cool thing. But the truth is, the answer to all the problems of the world were standing right in front of this guy. That's right. What I've been looking for, this is what I want. And Jesus, of course, Jesus had mercy on him. And he healed him right then and there. And again, for us, I think what we need to understand is as we gather together, it isn't that bubbling of the water. It's responding to the word of God right. over your life. Yes. And the word of God over your life this morning, here's a word for you, every single one of you. The Lord will give you extreme mercy. He would give you extreme mercy today. That this enemy that you see today, you will see no longer. That he would pour out his spirit in richness and fullness in your life. That you would put the past behind. And you would no longer be a prisoner to the things that have held you captive. That he would have you stand up, pack up your sleeping mat. No longer camp out at this place where you've just been living the same old, same old, but he would bring you out to bring you to a place of new freedom that you can taste and see that the Spirit of the Lord is good for you and that he would break off the strongholds of your life. No more nightmares. Amen. No more yes. terror. Yes. No more fear. The word that kept jumping out to me this morning was the word oppression. That those things that have clouded into you, I don't know about you, but for my life, when I sit there and, and I have a mistake or I have problems, I, I mean one mistake, you know, but you know, I, I've had several issues in my life that constantly haunt me. And that's a good word to use, haunt. Because just when you start feeling good about yourself, it's kind of like the prodigal son. You know, he's sitting there, he's got the robe on, everything looks good, but every now and then he gets a whiff. You know, he's like, what do I do? This is pink. Oh, it's me that smells, you know, and, and he realizes that even though dad's restored him and dad's forgiven him, he's still covered. He didn't take a chance. He didn't have a chance to take a shower. He just, they just put the robe on him and he went to the dinner, right? And sometimes you get a whiff of yourself and then that brings depression because we know our failures, we know our insecurities, we know our weaknesses. Well, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Like it said, Jesus knew that this guy had been sick for a long time, 38 years. And you know, I would assume most of us 
you know, that are over 38, we've been, had, been carrying some of these issues over 38. For the bubbling, you just need to stand up, pick up your bed, and walk, because this is the day of deliverance. The Lord would put these things behind us and allow us to move into a place of freedom like never before. I believe that you are entering as a congregation into a new season of time, again, of extreme mercy. You don't know why. It isn't because you changed the doors or changed the paint. It looks amazing, by the way. But all these things have taken place because the hand of the Lord says, I love you. Amen. I love you. And I want to show myself and I want to demonstrate myself to you in this manner. And I want to show you this. And this is where we need the switch. You see, 38 years of slaying by the pool, you know, that's his job. I don't know if he was on government subsidy or whatever else, but he was there. That's all he did. But now he's got, he, what he, he can't go there tomorrow and say, what are you doing? I'm just sitting by the pool. Why? You need to be healed. No, I got healed yesterday. I'm going to sit by the pool. A lot of times we'll do that, guys. We just live in the status quo of yesterday. We live in the pattern that we've been trapped in. Enough is enough. It's time to change the way we live, who we are and what we are, and become productive in our healing. We need to yeah. get up, pick up our bed, and now go find a job of the kingdom. What's the what's the kingdom job? Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Amen. It is time that we get ourselves not focused here, because healing is coming. Healing is here. But now that we turn around, listen, how many of you know somebody that really needs Jesus? And I'm not talking to the person next to you, but you know, he really, really <laughs> needs him. You know, I would say, it's, but uh, it's that that area that you see your neighbors, your workplace, your school place, you know, your 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 friends that you hang out with. Is there somebody you know who needs Jesus? Amen. And we sit there and we look at them and we think, well, you know, maybe someday, you know, maybe we get the big miracle, man. That angel has to stir the pool, you know, like this. And, and we don't realize, you know, it's no more of a miracle than it took to save you, right? I mean. You think you think you were a piece of cake? You know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord still had to die for you. You know, that's how that works. But in that, here's the situation: these people need to know the light. But we're so busy looking at fix me, fix me, fix me, fix me that we're afraid to talk about life. And the Lord's saying, "Listen, your job is not to lay by the pool anymore. Pick up your bed and walk. Don't live in this oppression." any longer. Pick up your bed and walk. Where are you going to walk to? I don't know where he had to go. I don't know what he had to do. But it was different than what he'd been doing for the last 38 years. Right? And that's the word of the Lord for us. That we pick up our bed and we walk and we move into the light. And listen, you know, we love praise and worship. I mean, it's fun. We, I mean, it just, it's like oil. It's wonderful. It keeps, keeps the parts running. It's awesome. But here's the thing. We want to see a celebration. We want to touch heaven. Scripture says that all heaven rejoices when one person comes to the kingdom of God. You want to join the party? Start telling the gospel. Yes. You want to see heaven ignite? You want to see the glory of the Lord come into your life? Start preaching the gospel. And you'll see that take place. Does that mean you have to get a pulpit, get a microphone and do all this? No. It just means you take your next door neighbor out. You take your friends, whoever you're... Uh, golfing with if you can find their ball but you know it's like uh, I've not had a good time yesterday yeah anyway we'll go into that in the previous time but uh, you know but in that situation is that you know that we begin to share the good news for what's happening to us when, you know that you would really like, you know if that happened today the guy who was laying by the pool got healed I mean, he'd be on TVN, he'd be on God Channel, he'd be on Daystar. He, you know, he'd have a career at this point. Write a book, you know, How to Lay by the Pool. You know, it's, 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 it's a good book. It'd probably sell well. But, you know, this whole thing is that, you know, everything's different. But see, you have to understand, when the deliverance of the Lord comes into our life, everything must be different in our lives, right? You cannot live your life just in the pattern of yesterday. If you're going to come be, be free then be free. And don't live. Don't, don't wake up in the morning, you know, oh, i got to get my walker, or I've got to get my mat, i got to go back to the pool. No, you can't. You're not welcome at the pool anymore. You've already got your healing. Go and be productive. Yes. Right? And I believe the Lord would speak that to you. I think the Lord would speak that as a place of washing over us. But we don't try to base our future upon the failures of the past or upon the oppression of the past over the sickness 
of the past, over the poverty of the past, whether we say enough is enough. Now I think in this, as, as we begin to evaluate this, and everyone has to evaluate it differently, you have to remember what the Holy Spirit spoke to you. We always like to say, we need to remember that prophetic word that we got on a better day. We need to remember what God has spoken to us on a better day. Do you think for one moment that God has said, oh, this is passing shelf life. You know, oh, I'm sorry, this is expired. You know, sorry, you missed your prophetic word, throw it away. You know, no. His word, his promises are without repentance. And they don't expire. But the problem is we've been looking at the pool instead of looking at the master. And so what the Lord's saying is just turn around. Look at me. Yeah. See what I'm offering. Do you think I was kidding when I said I would heal you? Did you think I was kidding when you said I when I told you I'd take away the oppression and the fear? Did you think I was kidding when I said I'd set you free? Do you think the problems that you deal with are too big for me? Too overwhelming for me? Do you think for one moment that the circumstances of our economy, of our state of the nation, state of the world, do you think for one moment that I break out in a sweat over that? No, I know who I am and I know who you are. And I would call you forward to be the man and woman of God that you were created to be. Yeah. Enough is enough. What is distracting you from the man standing next to you, saying, do you want to be? Well, I don't the pool. No, you need to watch it. It isn't going to come in the fashion that they were used to. It's going to come by looking at the heathen. Amen. Okay? Do you hear that? Guys, we need a mind switch here. We need to shift gears just, just a little bit. And realizing, well, it's a miracle. We believe in miracles. That's awesome. But really understanding that it isn't wish upon a star. It isn't clicking your heels together. It is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords saying, today is your day of deliverance. Oh, I've heard that before. Yeah, come on, you know. Okay, Lord, we believe you. Come on. But there's another part of this, right? Pick up your bed. In other words, you know, <laughs> politely, that's how Jesus said it. But to really, to us, it's get off your butts. You know, we find that the body of Christ is full of butts. <laughs> it really is. Take a look. But, you know, it, 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 you know, but it says, you know, I do this butt. I go there, but I would, but you don't know what I've been through, but right, true, enough. You see, even if you think about it, even the religious structure of the time. Who told you to do this on the Sabbath? You know, you can't get healed that way. You can only get healed this way. No, the Lord supersedes the status quo. Yes. So the buts have to be eliminated. So Lord. You say you want to deliver me? Here I am. Save me. Circumstances that have held you captive? Uh, all those things. And I, and I see that word circumstances. You know, and, and we we for every circumstance we have 21 excuses why it won't work. What if it doesn't work? What if this doesn't work? What if that doesn't work? Here's a better question. What if it does? You know, isn't it time that we rise up and begin to implement ourselves? To what we know to be true, right? Hmm. I, I need that deliverance. I don't know about you. Amen. You know, I, I need that freedom. I don't know about you. You know, I'm tired of wringing my hands. I'm tired of waking up in the morning with anxiety. I'm tired of being fearful. I'm tired of the things that have just stolen my joy, peace, and righteousness in the kingdom of God. I don't want to be stolen from anymore. But I want to take on to the promise what the scripture says that when the thief is discovered, and I know who he is. Right. Okay, I know who that thief is, that he must repay seven times over. Right. Seven right. times over yes. what he's done. How rich would you be? Amen. Mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. How rich would you be if the enemy had to get back? Well, listen, here's what Jesus said. We want to be healed. Stand up. Pick up your bed and come and follow me. How do we do that? That we believe his word over the circumstances. Yes. Right? Yeah, that's right? We battle not against flesh and blood, right? The principalities and powers of darkness. The Bible says, why the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians says, 
that pull down every lofty thought that would raise itself above the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? It's the Word of God. True? Yes. So in that, here's the situation. We have a choice. Am I going to believe my circumstances, or am I going to believe what God has said within His Word? And I'm going to fight that fight, right? But, but you know that the mind is here. You know, the battle is in the mind, right? It, this is where the war goes on. How, and, and, and how many of you realize your fantasy life, you know, in a good way, get, get, you know, supersedes you know, your, your normal thought life? You know, how many of you have ever, you know, you know, like, like you know, you're laying in bed and you go, oh, oh no, I love oh, I've got cancer in my life. This is the end of my life. This is it. And you just lay there in bed and you think, oh, Mama. I hope I don't suffer a lot here. I don't have my funeral. I wonder who will come to my funeral. You know, and, and, you know, you know, and, and you kind of go through the whole thing of, you know, and, I want to sing that song. I want them to speak. This would be I mean, Then you wake up in the morning. Oh, it's my rib. You know, and, 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 but you've lost a whole night's sleep over worrying about you know what's going to happen. Truth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But isn't that doesn't that fantasy drive you? Doesn't that fantasy you know per, per, uh, persist in your life to the point where you actually start making plans according to it? Do you realize that we believe our fantasies more than we believe the word of God? You know. We always say this as he was referring to it. Don't believe everything you think. It may not be true. You know, just because you think it doesn't make it that. I know it's hard to believe, you know, but it's, it, it is true. Just because you think it doesn't mean it's true. And you need to understand, if it does not line up with the Word of God, it is not true. This is the truth. This is the foundation by which we stand. So here's what's going to happen. I need to rise up. How am I going to rise up? Here's a practical application. Enemy... Enough is enough. I will not live this way any longer. I bring you captive right now. And I if there's nothing more, you can claim this one. You know, John 10, 10. You know, I know you're a thief, and I know you've come, and you've t taken my joy, my peace, and my righteousness. You've taken away my hope, my vision, my enthusiasm for the future. You've taken away every aspiration I've had in my life. Well, I got news for you. Jesus says in the same verse, but I've come to give you a life that is rich. And in the name of Jesus, I tell you right now, get your hands off of me. Amen. You will not steal from me any longer. You will not take my peace in the name of Jesus. But I claim back in my life that bubbling water, that the freedom of my childhood, the freedom of my growing up in the kingdom, or what in real life, it doesn't matter. I claim back the joy of my salvation. I claim back the peace that passes all understanding. I want to stand in righteousness without condemnation. I fight you now, and I tell you, you get your hands off of my life. In Jesus' name, I bring those things down, and I bring them captive in the name of Jesus, and I allow the word of God to be the platform by which I stand. Amen. He's come to give me a rich, full, satisfying life. And if you're not living, Susie says this, if you, you know, what, what is it you say? Okay, I hear so many things. Wait, no, but, <laughs> no, that's mine. I don't need that one. You no, say that. I will say that in a minute. But uh, I'm not, I'm just like, if you're not living rich, uh, more than you can imagine. If you're not living more than hope you're imagined, it's coming. That's it's right. And so in that, so you, there, yeah, right. <laughs> I'm trying to hurry before that happens. But, you know, <laughs> But in that, you know, it is that. It's more than, you know, that fullness. If we're not living in that richness and fullness, yeah. we're not there. Don't you dare settle for laying by the pool. Don't you dare settle for the status quo. Rich, full, and satisfying. Amen. Come Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, you know, that to get rid of a problem, you have to admit you have a problem. True? You know, well, I don't need to lose weight. I just need to buy bigger clothes. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not overweight. I'm just four inches too short. You know, I, you know, I'm just, I've been praying. Come on, God. You know, I, you know, right? You understand what I'm saying? You, know, you can you can make up excuses of why this doesn't work. Enough is enough. You know, yes. And like Susie was saying, you know, when we think about the future, well, this won't work. Well, then, you know, worry. Is a prediction of the future without God. And that's what we need to evaluate. Worry is the prediction of the future without God in the equation. That's real tweetable. Yeah. By the way, just to let you know, uh, we you know we're on the uh, West Coast, 
and uh, I wake up in the morning, I turn on my you know computer to do all my stuff. You guys show up on Sunday morning, and you know even if there's nobody here, we can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just to let you know, you are being broadcast around the world. Okay, yeah. so, so just be aware that when you're in this room, you are being seen. Right? <laughs> Pictures it earlier, but uh, you know that's that. But you know, in that, as we as we look at this, it is an action. If you have faith, then put your money where you're not. Don't wait for the bubbling. Pick up your bed. So this morning, I think the Lord would uh, would bring that opportunity to us. I really do. I don't think it has to be big, active, dramatic, you know, and have the you know deliverance song being sung. But I, I, I do think that the Lord would bring that place of freedom. Come, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Lord, would you move even this moment and set the captives free, including me? I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I don't want to be sick and tired of being. I'm tired of those things that have attached itself to my ankles, that have held me down, that have caused me to walk with a limp, that have caused me not to run, that has actually caused me to be weary, has stopped me from flying. I come now in the name of Jesus and I say, Lord, I hear your words. I want to pick up my bed and I want to walk in Jesus' name. I want to be set free. Lord, I, I, I declare that your word supersedes my circumstances. Lord, even in my failures, even in my shortcomings, it does not diminish who you are. It just shows my humanness. And I ask that you would come right now and give me back the joy of my salvation. Restore unto me the joy of my soul. Lord, let me remember what happened. Restore unto me a clean spirit. Wipe away the worry and the anxiety and the oppression. You can catch that thief right now in Jesus' name. You will not steal. You will not kill. And you will not destroy what God has planned for my life. In the name of Jesus, it is not too late. My promises have not expired. I, I speak them into existence. My amen to my life, to what you're saying in my life, that nothing will drop to the ground, but your word will not return until it's accomplished its purpose. Begin that purpose in me this morning. I make a decision that I will not lay by the pool any longer. But I'm going to pick up my mat. I'm going to brush myself off. I'm going to rise up and I'm going to walk into the future. You have to. Not for what people have predestined for. Not what governments have predestined for. Not what finances or circumstances have predestined for. I take your word, put everything else down, and take it captive to the obedience of what you have said my life. What you've spoken, let it be done in my life. In Jesus' name. This is, uh, you know, in that story, you, you realize the man's laying there and the Lord comes to him. The water came to him. This is what Tom means when he says, pick up your mat. No great preaching, no great preacher, no great church, no tracking across the United States to go to Bethel. You know what I mean? That can't do it for you. Isaiah 26, 3 says this, I will keep that person in a perfect peace whose mind stayed on me. This is a responsibility we have. Listen, that, that whole, that quote, I'm sure you all wrote it down. You know, that, that worry, you are predicting the future without God in the equation. But folks, he's in the equation. And he's not dying twice for you. If you think, well, it wasn't enough, you're wrong. You're not that person God's going to lie to. You're not that special. I hate to tell you, but you're not that special. 
that God will become a liar on your behalf. And it's our responsibility. I gotta pick up my mat. I gotta take my thoughts captive. Those people that sit in darkness and and, and what is it? Sit in darkness and <coughs> those people that are sitting in darkness. <laughs> listen, we have to stop misappropriating our wealth. People wait for truth. They wait for light. And and if you think, well, when I get my act together, I will bring that light. Newsflash, that's never going to happen. Because Jesus, one of the 7,498 promises, one of them was literally from the mouth of Jesus. Lots of them were. But this one said, in this world, you will have problems. Okay? So get over it. You're going to have trouble. But he also said, in your weakness I'll be made strong. Greater am I that lives in you than he that lives in the world. Colossians 1.28. I love that passage. Christ in me. The hope of glory. That's right. Go, girl. Listen, Christ in me. I told the girls yesterday, when you walk into a room, you should change the atmosphere of the room. If you work in a dark Wrapping crappy Florida, what we do in California. So if you work in a dark, gloomy, horrible people at your job, whatever you think I'm working in the pit of hell, guess what? It's okay. Because when you walk into that job site, you should change. You bring light into it. You bring truth into that spot. And everybody around you should be affected by the light in you. It's not about you or me being perfect. It's about us believing. It's about when the water comes to us and he says, hey, I'm in you. I'm with you. I'm here. Pick up your mat and walk. That we decide to get up and pick up our mats and walk. Amen? When Cindy was sharing that part about um, when the pastor in England, you know, it says it's about the famine. You know, but what we were talking about, we were in a meeting with just about this many people and they were their prophetic people in the congregation. And, uh, you know, he said, it's time that you guys start profit sharing. Because you have so many, you have so much wealth. That's a good one, right? You, know, you, you have so much wealth in your, in your midst. Yeah. Guys, you know, we were talking last night, you know, that, do you know how desperate people are for family? <coughs> you know, you're a little bit more stable here than we are on the West Coast. You know, we have families that live there. Uh, our daughter and son-in-law just started a church that we're attending now. But we used to attend this other church down the road, and uh, we would go there. And there was all these twenty-somethings and thirty-somethings. Where's your mom and dad? Oh, they live in New York. Where's your mom and dad? Oh, they live in Michigan. Where's mom and dad? They live in Florida. They live, you know. And these guys are looking around, and you see them. They're orphans. But do you know what the world's crying for? And you just need to kind of do the math here. Look what the enemy's trying to destroy. Family values, truth. You know, today, divorce, you know, all sorts of chaos is more prevalent than anything than it's ever been. Why? Because the enemy knows that the Lord paints a picture of himself in marriage, right? And he wants to destroy that image the best way he can. You are wealthy. You are wealthy. You have a pastor who, they're actually pastors. You know, we always tell people, you know, you don't need to pray for apostles and prophets and everything else. You just need to pray for the pastors. You know, they're the, they're the ones that you won't go into that, but, you know, don't pray for them. But uh, it's like, you know, but, you know, this is the stuff that has to get cleaned up. You know, pray for the Lord to bring workers into the field that will bring it. Well, guess what? What do you have to share? What do you have to give away? What do you represent within this community? Your name denotes you. Okay, so take this area. Take Pontos for the kingdom of God. Take it and let, let the kingdom of God build his family right here. All right? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Taste of the Brocks. And those dust in Jesus' throat is just wonderful. Yeah, I know. I don't know who influenced who as far as interrupting the preacher. Woman should be silent in the church. Yeah. <laughs> uh, don't tell that thing there. Yeah. Uh, the truth has set you free. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amazing that, that, that man laying on the mat there allowed God to love him. Yeah. Allowed. 
Our purpose in life is to allow God to love us. Mm. And truly, if you find yourself in that place where uh, listen, you need to get up and know that the loving arms of Jesus will pick you up, will help you up, and will walk with you until you can walk properly with your head held high, because that's what he wants to do. He wants to love us. I just, I felt that I really needed to share with you, do not allow the circumstances to discourage you or bring you into depression. Uh, My sister died in November last year of stage four thyroid cancer. And I'm telling you, not once, not once, did I ever hear that woman complain, say God can't, given to the enemy, even when she couldn't speak, could hardly breathe, she still gave him glory. So do not allow depression, oppression, negativity to creep into your life because it will destroy you. As Tom said, the big battleground is between your ears. The biggest battleground. I went going through a a difficult time in Zimbabwe. I thought maybe I need to go to a career analysis to see if I'm in the right career career, because it's not working for me. I'm really having a tough time. I went in there and did the whole three hour test and a week later I took Bell back and said, listen, I need proof of what she's about to say about me, so come on and be proof. And when I got there, she says, um, you are in a state of full nervous breakdown. You should be hospitalized from your tests. How on earth are you going through life? I said, I'm a, I'm a believer and I have one scripture. <coughs> Take every thought captive and bring it to the obedience of Christ. How did I do that? Because I was going through it. And if I had to share with you what I was going through, you would understand why I was in that condition. But when I woke up in the morning, I could not think beyond nine o'clock in the morning because I'd go into a cold sweat and I'd lose it. And I'd bring my thoughts back and I'd say, okay, we're going to have coffee and I'm going to think until seven o'clock, one hour. That's all I did. That's how aggressive I had to become with my thinking. And I had to walk like that for two years to walk out of the hole. I didn't have medication, didn't have anything else. I just had the scripture. It says, take every thought captive. It requires you to take captive what's between your two years. Anyway, I thought I'd just share that. And I love to tell the story. I have a few character lines on my face from from, uh, from the body, and it's not the wife, okay? Maybe the shepherding, the sheep, but maybe. But, uh, um, but honestly, just ponder on, the, on, on that. There's, there's an action it required. We've got to be the hearers and doers of the word for us to see the fruit of it in our lives and, uh, and then watch it start bearing fruit. And, and an enemy, I just want to say this. Um, when you hear the sow and the seed, and the words get sown, it says that opposition comes because of the word. Not because the enemy has it in for you, no, he has, has it in for the word of God. Like when Jesus was doing all these miracles, and he got up and he, had, he was speaking from the book of Isaiah, and people were mouths open because they knew the man who was speak, declaring the scripture was the man standing in front of them. And then somebody said, but isn't this Joseph's son? Enemy to the world. Oh, those are just California people. Can anything good come from California? (laughs) Don't let that lie sit in your head. I want you to listen to God's word. I'll say something that's important. You've got to understand that the enemy will attack you any which way to stop you thinking and believing the word. Did God really say? Something I need you to do. The word is important today because it will shift all of us. Shift all of us and requires you to ponder on it. And if you didn't take notes, naughty, naughty, <laughs> go to live stream, listen to it again, write some notes so the enemy doesn't come and steal it from you. Because it's, why isn't it? Change happens because we change. Because we're taking the word and saying, no, take every thought captive, no. I, I, I'm driving along and the belt suddenly hears me say, no. He says, what's going on? So I'm just opposing a thought. I verbalize it. It's important, church. Anyway, good practice. I'm not saying no to my wife. It doesn't go well with you. Uh, again, I listen to Tom and Linda. Where's the, what happened to them? Tom and Linda, would you come up here? Jerry and Maria, would you come up here? Ben and Sandy, would you come up here? 
Nice study chair. You can stand all up here. Valerie. Valerie. It's part of the leadership team that helps helps Val and I hold our arms up so the battle may prevail. And uh, okay, Val and I were uh, were going to Canada in November. And then obviously Dee passed away and we had to fly to South Africa, so we cancelled. We were going to Canada so we could be a part of uh, those that remember Dwayne in the net. They planted a church, the uh, Wayfront Church, and so we were going to do a camp for them and just kind of get, get the, the new family going. And we couldn't make it, so we rescheduled it. It's for next, next week, uh, Father's Day, so we're going to be doing a camp for them. So I just wanted to let, let you know that behind me is a team that are well and able to take your calls. If you need them, they'll call, you call them. If you need them uh, in any way, shape or form, they're also, uh, obviously Lisa, please Lisa, stand up. She's an administrator, she'll be able to help. Okay, I, we, we're coming back, okay? We're coming back. We're just gonna <laughs> pop up to Canada. But I just wanna let you know that. Um, I also wanna just say that uh, the team behind me, I've asked them to follow up on on you guys. So if you get a call from them, it, they're representing Val and our hearts to say, are you okay? If you, if they may have a word for you. I'm, I'm, I'm giving them, giving certain folk to, to each one of them so that they can pray over and, and maybe God will give them a word or something that they be encouraged. So to understand that they're an extension of Val and our arms, the, the folk there. So I just want you to stretch your hands towards them and I just want to pray for them. Um, I just want to say, team, thank you so much. I um, enjoyed our time together yesterday, uh, and uh, we just want to, want to pray for you. You stay there, I'll pray for you. You need a lot of prayer, sister. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good relationship. Yeah. <laughs> so, Father, thank you. I, I feel so safe with these people. They carry our hearts, they carry each member of the congregation's heart. They carry the heart of, of what we represent as family. And so, Father, as we, as Val and I head over across to Canada, we really thank you that uh, we allow uh, the fathering and the mothering of of our family in the hands of of of, of Tom and Linda and Ben and Sandy, Jerry and Maria, and we say thank you, Father. We thank thank you for uh, uh, Lisa, who does the administration and all that kind of stuff. So, Father, thank you that we can uh, know that uh, the enemy does not prevail. The enemy has no way. Father, we, 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 we thank you that uh, around each one of us we have this the angelic host looking after us, watching over us. And we thank you, Father, that uh, we can boldly go out there and be the light in a desperately needed world. And so, Father, we thank you for that. And we thank you for this team in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I'd like one of you in the team to pray for Val and I so we can minister effectively up in Canada if you would do so. Come on. Don't more die with you. Father, yes. well, we thank you this morning because we can take the steps of a righteous man of God by the Lord. And Father, we pray for Pastor Val and Pastor Rod as they lead. We pray, Lord, that you will anoint their, hand, their hands and if you travel wherever they if you tread, Father, we pray that it will be a blessing, Lord God, as they go. Father, to Lynette and, and the husband, Lord, we pray, God, that you will just be with them. Every word they say will be a blessing, Father. Everyone they you have an encounter with, Father, you will bring change, Father. Father, that they will be channels to reach divine favor flow, friend and misfortune in the life of people, Father. Bless them and bring them back safely. We thank you in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. 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 So, if we have the musicians, we've got to go out and happy.